On this channel, I have gradually gone on a more socio-political route, tending to focus on things or theories or events through the lens of feminism. However, the more political these topics get, the more complex they get, and that means new terminology that we may not always understand. Basically, it can get confusing when you don't know a lot about the definitions themselves, and feminism, women's studies, and gender studies are extremely vast topics, so what better way to learn about it than to present my research in a form of content because if you're spending a lot of time doing something why not capitalize off it i'm sure by now the majority of you have seen iceberg videos thrive on youtube iceberg tears are a genre of list images in which a person's expertise on a topic is represented by an iceberg metaphor the tip of the iceberg tends to be common knowledge and the further we get down the iceberg the more the knowledge becomes obscure i think it might have been inspired by the use of the iceberg metaphor across academia but it's tend to be repurposed right now for fandoms. I came across a feminism iceberg on icebergcharts.com and from there I used it with inspiration to create my own as well as reorder some of the things that were in the original. Some of these tiers are quite content heavy so this will become a kind of series where I split the tiers up into videos. There are some topics on here that I want to explore further so they will become deep dives and be a basis for other video topics. So now that all the explanations is out the way, let's get on with tier one. So tier one kind of includes things that most people would know about feminism and most events that people might have heard of. It does include a range of different events, theories, movements, etc. but I'll explain them as we go through. I'm gonna focus on waves at the beginning of this tier. Feminism is often categorized as waves, which describe time periods aimed at elevating women's statuses in society and giving them equal rights. Like physical waves, which is probably why it's become the metaphor. A feminist movement begins with a surge of activity in the beginning of the phase, which then reaches its peak and usually in a form of a concrete accomplishment and consequence of struggle, comes down. Referring to the 19th century and early 20th century, the first wave of feminism revolved largely around gaining basic legal rights for women. With politics and businesses being largely dominated by powerful men, women were not deemed capable enough to be a threat within the industry. They tended to be confined to their households where they didn't really retain any control either. Unmarried women were seen as properties of their fathers and married women were, you guessed it, property of their husbands. They didn't have the ability to file for divorce or to be granted custody of their children. During this time, women organised and advocated for social and constitutional equal rights to white men, including the right to vote, the right to education, the right to their own property, and the right to be legally recognised as independent subjects from their husbands rather than property. So basically, they were just campaigning to be seen as people. The first way emerged out of an environment of urban industrialism and liberal socialist politics with the goal to open up opportunities for women with a focus on suffrage. The way formally began at the Seneca Falls Convention in 1848 when 300 men and women rallied to the cause of equality for women. The second wave of feminism began in the 1960s in the US and continued throughout the 1970s spreading to other western countries. This way focused on issues of equality and discrimination unfolding within the context of the anti-war and civil rights movements. The movement focused on public and private injustices such as rape, reproductive rights, domestic violence and workplace harassment. There was also an increasing interest in exposing and overcoming the casual systemic racism presented in society which differed from the suffragists and suffragettes of the 19th century feminism. Here they largely focused on political equality through suffrage fridge but didn't really account for the racial side of this. Second wave feminists worked under the unifying goal of social equality with sexuality and reproductive rights being central concerns to the liberation movement. The third wave of feminists
feminism that emerged in the mid-1990s was led by so-called Generation Xers, who were born in the 60s and 70s. Although they benefited significantly from the legal rights and protections that had been obtained by the other waves of feminism, they also critiqued the positions and what they felt was the unfinished work of second wave feminism. They tended to criticise the exclusive nature of the previous movements and the marginalisation of minorities in the mainstream. To combat this, the third wave primarily tried to bring in communities that were previously left out of feminist goals and recognise the intersectionality of oppression. It focused on race and gender and grew out of the sex positive debates of the second wave. Feminists advocated for women's right to make her own decisions with her own body and stated that it is a basic right to have access to birth control and abortion. Liberal feminism focuses on the responsibility of the individual to enact change so that both men and women can be viewed as equals in the eyes of the law and society. This emerged as a political position in the 1970s and 80s. Liberal feminism worked within the structure of mainstream society to integrate women into that structure. Due to the idea of gaining freedom from within the system, it tends to be adopted by white middle class women who do not disagree with the current social structure. Liberal feminism actively supports men's involvement in feminism and both men and women have always been active participants in the movement. Liberal feminism's primary goal is to get gender equality in the public sphere, such as equal access to education, equal pay, ending job sex segregation and better working conditions. They believe that legal changes would make this possible. However, it has been accused of focusing on white middle class women and not those that actually have other factors of oppression. According to Urban Dictionary, girl boss is a term used to describe a woman who is self-made, running their own business and acting as their own boss. This term is becoming highly publicised over time due to internet use and social media. However, in time, the term has been flipped on its head and is often used derogatorily by Gen Zers or ironically. Although the phrase aligns with feminism in theory, in practice, it actually seems very anti-feminist. This is actually down to scammers, the women who take part in pyramid schemes who somehow wormed their way into the idea that they are a girl boss. This is why it has become a joke to younger generations. Though many who take part in pyramid schemes are usually victims of the schemes themselves, they have been perceived as people who are going to try and sell you on some cheap hair product or clothing brand, and then get you to join the brand that they're selling as a way to move up in the pyramid. Ultimately, they don't care about what happens to you in the process, and then it becomes a never-ending cycle. A pussy hat is a pink crafted hat created in large numbers by women involved with the United States 2017 Women's March. Millions of men, women and children at over 600 rallies in countries that virtually touched every continent wore handmade knitted caps on a single day, awash in a sea of pink, arm in arm in solidarity for women's rights and in protest against the rhetoric used towards women in the previous year's state and federal elections. The name Pussy Hat was chosen in part to protest against vulgar comments that Donald Trump made about the freedom he felt to grab women's genitals. The term was used to stigmatise the word pussy and transform it into one of empowerment and it was also used to refer to the pussycat ears on the hats themselves. The notion of rape culture was developed by second wave feminists, primarily in the United States beginning in the 1960s. Rape culture is a culture where sexual violence and abuse is normalised and played down. In this culture, rape is accepted, excused, laughed off, or not challenged enough by society as a whole. Rape culture is also a culture where people are making money or benefiting in some way or another from this normalisation of sexual violence and abuse. Behaviours commonly associated with rape culture include victim blaming, slut shaming, sexual objectification, 
trivialization of rape, the denial of widespread rape, refusing to acknowledge the harm caused by sexual violence, or some combination of these. Me Too is a social movement against sexual abuse, sexual harassment, and rape culture, where people publicize their experience of sexual abuse or harassment. The phrase was initially used in this context on social media in 2006 by a MySpace user who was a sexual assault survivor and activist, Tarana Burke. Initially, the purpose of Me Too is to empower sexually assaulted people, especially young and vulnerable women of colour. It focused on empathy, solidarity, and strength in numbers, and visibly demonstrated how many have experienced sexual assault and harassment, especially in the workplace. Following the exposure of numerous sexual abuse allegations against film producer Harvey Weinstein in October 2017, the movement began to spread virally as a hashtag on social media. Hence, the hashtag, hashtag Me Too, was used starting in 2017 as a way to draw attention to the magnitude of the problem. Slut Walk is a movement like Me Too that calls for the end of rape culture, including victim blaming and slut shaming of sexual assault victims. Participants of the Slut Walk are protesting explicitly against explaining or excusing rape by referring to any aspect of a woman's appearance. The protest takes a form of a march, mainly by women who are wearing clothes that consider to be slutty, such as low-cut tops, short skirts, and stockings. The rallies initially began on April 3rd in 2011 in Toronto, Canada, because a Toronto police officer suggested that women should avoid dressing like sluts as a way to prevent sexual assault. Patriarchy can be defined as the systematic domination of women by men in some or all of society's spheres and institutions. The main source of patriarchal theory stems from feminism, which highlights how the public-private divide and the norm of women being combined to the domestic sphere was the main source of male dominance and female oppression, highlighted by the famous feminist slogan, the personal is political. The patriarchy also oppresses not just women, but other marginalized genders and men due to the enforcement of traditional gender roles. Please watch my previous video for more information on that. Also called the private is political, the personal is political is a political slogan expressing a common belief among feminists that the personal experiences of women are rooted in their political situation and gender inequality. The statement is often misinterpreted as the opposite though, that women's personal behavior is of political significance. Misogyny is defined as a hatred or prejudice against women, typically exhibited by men. It is generally accepted that misogyny is a consequence of patriarchy, and the term can be applied to certain individuals as well as larger systems, societies, or cultures. Internalized misogyny is when women subconsciously project sexist ideas onto other women or even themselves. It doesn't necessarily refer outright to the belief of inferiority of women, though. It refers to the byproducts of of this societal view that cause women to shame, doubt, and undervalue themselves and others of their gender. Gamergate was an online movement primarily comprised of gamers. On its surface, it was dedicated to preserving ethics in video game journalism. However, many used it as an outlet for their misogynistic and sexist views. Due to the actions of some members within the movement, it is often linked to misogyny within the gaming community. Gender trolling involves the use of gender-based insult, vicious language, and credible threats like rape threats and death threats by a coordinated group of trolls to humiliate women, particularly those who speak out. The term glass ceiling refers to a metaphorical invisible barrier that prevents certain people from being promoted to a managerial or executive level positions within an organisation or industry. The phrase is commonly used to describe the difficulties faced by women and minorities when trying to move to higher roles in a male-dominated corporate hierarchy. Should have really included this one earlier, but suffrage is the right to vote in political elections. The male gaze describes a way of portraying and looking at women that empowers men while sexualizing and diminishing women. 
The term was first popularised in relation to the representation of female characters in film as inactive, often explicitly sexualised objects of male desire. This isn't just limited to how women and girls are depicted in movies though, the influence of the male gaze encompasses the experience of being seen in this way, both for females on screen, the viewers, and by extension, all girls and women. Mansplaining, or to mansplain, is a blend of man and explain. It is used to describe when a man gives unsolicited advice or direction in a condescending manner about a subject that the person they're explaining it to actually is more knowledgeable in. Usually the word describes a type of conversation where due to sexist bias, a man automatically assumes he is more knowledgeable than the woman he is talking to. Toxic masculinity refers to the concept that some people's ideas of manliness perpetuates domination, homophobia, and aggression. It involves the cultural pressures for men to behave in a certain way, and it's likely that this will affect all boys and men in some fashion. Many assume that toxic masculinity is used to describe just behaving like a man or to define all traits of masculinity as toxic. Instead, it involves the extreme pressure some men may feel to act in a way that's harmful. For example, toxic masculinity may discourage men from getting mental health treatment because things like depression, anxiety, substance use abuse, and other mental health problems are seen as a weakness. It is important to point out that toxic masculinity isn't just encouraged by men, and rather it is a result of the patriarchy that everyone feeds into. The phrase not all men is a common rebuttal used mostly by men in conversations about gender in order to exempt them from criticisms of common male behaviours. This is due to the generalisation of men when sexual assault, rape and sexual harassment discussions happen, especially in online circles. The phrase, not all men are like that, has been around on social media since the mid-2000s. However, the hashtag, not all men, became a feminist meme, satirically parodying arguments used to deflect away from men in discussions of sexual assault and general inequality and feminist issues. And finally, no means no, which is an anti-rape slogan that emphasises sexual consent. And that just about wraps it up for tier 1. The next tier does include some well-known topics, but also some more obscure ones that the everyday person might not know about. If there are any events, terms, or movements that I haven't covered in this tier that you think belong on the iceberg, or there's one that you want to see later on, please just leave a suggestion down below. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. I do create lots of videos that tend to focus around feminist theory, as well as other socio-political stuff. Thank you for all of your support recently, and with that, I'll see you soon.